Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What We Said podcast. Today, we have a very special, gorgeous guest with us in the studio. It is my mom, Jilly. Welcome. Thanks. You have not been here in like three years. No. I swear. Maybe two or three years. Wow. Because the only episode you were on was with when we had you and Chelsea's mom on, right? For Mother's Day? Or did you come on again? I did one. Did I do another design one like way, way in the beginning? Maybe. I feel like I did, but I remember doing the one with Chelsea's mom at the house, but I don't remember the other one, but it it seemed like we did. A different one? I don't know. Maybe you just took questions or something and I answered some on your story or something. I honestly can't remember, but regardless, I feel like it's been a while. So maybe, maybe thoughts and feelings have changed. Maybe your design tips will be new now. Yeah. Well, for sure. I mean, we can't even remember them, so. Yeah. (laughs) They couldn't have been that great. (laughs) Um, Chelsea is on maternity leave, as you guys know, just for a few more weeks. And she's doing great. If you guys saw, she had her baby. He is so cute and perfect and healthy. And she's doing awesome. And we're going to wait for her, herself, to obviously give you guys all the the whole story on her her birth and everything, but I can't can't wait to hear it. Yeah, she is doing great. So just to give you guys a little update and you guys can go follow her on Instagram or look at her Instagram for photos, the name reveal, everything, but everything's going great. And yeah, I'm excited for her to come back, but it'll be fun to do a few little guest episodes. So Jilly is on today because we are going to talk all about, well, we're going to talk about a lot of things, Okay, but I think primarily focusing on like design and how to make a space feel cozy. To give some context, let's explain why we would bring you on to talk about this topic. (laughs) She's like, "Eh, I don't know. Good question. Um, Well, the reason is because Jilly is a self-taught thrift extraordinaire. This is true. Would you say interior designer or decorator? A decorator is always has this kind of um, negative connotation, like in the design world, like interior designers hate to be called decorators. Okay. But aren't they different things? I mean, I did a lot of like prop styling, which is basically, you know, interior styling. Uh So I don't know. Sometimes I say I'm a prop stylist. Sometimes I just say I'm a stylist. I did lots of homes for magazine shoots. Uh So um, that's, you know, that's a stylist. So I mean, I've done, you know, I've done some pretty extensive remodels, so that... You have a lot of experience. That falls into interior design for sure, because you're when you're designing, you know, spaces from the ground up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't care what you call me. Call me a decorator, call me a designer, <laughs> call me a stylist. Like, I, I like them all. And you also didn't go to school for it. No. So it's not something that you, <laughs> Unfortunately. like, got a degree in or anything, no. but you just have a natural eye for design. And you always have. You've yeah, always, I've always loved it. You've always done creative ventures. <laughs> I've talked about on the podcast a little bit how you've just always had your own little businesses. Yes. I can think of, like, five off the yes, top of my head. at least. And it's all just, like, she would make and sew Christmas stockings, like, but very intricate yeah. like I don't even know how, how do you describe those I, stockings they were fancy it was like in the fancy era um it just lots of trims embroidery um, yeah like <laughs> damask fabrics and velvets and like um yeah they were not like shabby chic like light and airy they were very opulent and yeah yeah so you would make stockings you've done like cupcake baking caterer <laughs> situation I've done purses. lots of food stuff I did a little purse company yes with a friend I did also made those big signs for like entryways you remember for outside of course so let's say like did the you, address did you kind of I don't want to say invent that yes but I swear you did yes I did so I she made would, those up she would make these signs that say your address on them right yes. and it would say like the blank residence yeah. like whoever lived there and it would be like in this beautiful huge, frame like huge. a big huge frame and then inside would be a smaller frame that would say like um like the house number like 3154 no let's not give your house number I have to train I have to media train her <laughs> she's like here my that's just a, a random number 3154 and then it would say like the street number. So I would hand paint everything, all the wording, all the numbers. Mm-hmm. I would like really you know, like find really fun frames of vintage antique stuff. And then there would be a quote, like a quote about home and 
And I had, you know, lots of different ones that, or people could pick their own. So those were fun. And I did a lot of them. You have done so many yeah. things like that. What about growing up? sewing, sewing all the cheerleading costumes for my squad, like in high school, like it started back then. You've been a crafty queen <laughs> since day one. And did you also, when you were growing up, did you love to like read or like redo oh. your room? And oh stuff yeah. Like that? And my parents were so great about just letting me, every time I had an idea and it seemed like it was like every couple of years, right? We would do, my mom would be like, yes, let's do it. She was super encouraging. And yeah, um, she she got me my own sewing machine when I was eight and signed me up for sewing lessons. That was my eight-year-old birthday present. So um, I really wish I had the shirt I made. Oh, my gosh. If I can find that, I can still see it in my head. <gasps> Puff sleeve, navy, and kind of silvery stripe um, shirt. If I can find that for the baby. Oh, it would be, that would be it would epic. be so fun. Anyway, so yeah, like I would sew bedding and pillows and curtains and mm -hmm. um, my mom would always like help me rearrange my room, put the bed on a different wall, move the dresser around. Like it was, yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, you've done, you've done it all. Um, I feel like there's so many, there's so many different design questions. I also asked on Instagram for you guys if you had any specific questions about like making a space feel cozy or just design tips or anything like that. So there's a ton of that stuff to get into. I'm wondering if we should actually start with something else because I feel like we're going to talk about the design stuff forever. <laughs> but um, a few things. First of all, you're going to be a grandmother. You're going to be a grandma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, finally. <laughs> no, um, it's perfect timing. Yeah. it's Because so I turned 50 and now I'm ready to be a grandma. It really was. It was really, it's really nice it's timing. It's really good timing. I don't know that I really wanted to be a grandma when I was in my 40s. It, it seemed really young. I mean, of course, I would have been super happy, but. So you had like me, you had me when you were 21. Uh-huh. Like barely 21. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, I turned 21 in December and had you in January. So if I was following the same trajectory, I would have an eight-year-old right know, now. Isn't that so crazy? Which is wild <laughs> to think about and so crazy. If you struggle with your skin. Number one, you are not alone. I feel like skin issues are truly have affected my confidence more than most things, whether it's redness that I'm experiencing or acne or dryness. It's really obnoxious and annoying to deal with, and it's hard to want to go out and put makeup on and all of that different stuff when you're dealing with skin issues. So we are very excited to be sponsored by Apostrophe. Apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin. Whether you're dealing with breakouts, signs of aging, acne scarring, Apostrophe will help you love the skin you're in. Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne. You simply fill out an online consultation about your skin goals and medical history. Then snap a few selfies and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan just for you. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, and even back, chest, and butt acne. So you can treat breakouts from head to toe. I really didn't have much acne, honestly, until I was an adult, which shocked me. Um, so it can really hit at any time. But this is really nice to have access to an expert derm team, have like a tailored treatment plan. You don't have to go in person or go to the pharmacy or anything like that. So we have a special deal for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash what we said when you use our code what we said. That is a savings of $15. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash what we said and click get started and then use our code what we said at sign up and you will get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. But it is, I was thinking about how you are the oldest girl in your family. Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest girl in my family. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'm having a girl. Mm -hmm. There is such a specific, I don't know how much you've done research on like birth order. I honestly Not haven't much. done, I honestly haven't done much research either, but I feel like there's so much to be said about the way, like when you're born, how it affects like your personality yeah. and stuff like that. And I feel like you definitely have that older sister energy and so uh. do I. <laughs> and is that good or bad? You know, it it's is. pros and cons. Yeah. It just is what it is. Yeah. But I think even just the fact that you've like had all these businesses and done all this stuff and then I kind of have followed yeah. in the same path. It's like, I'm curious. I'm not putting any expectations. <laughs> I'm like, I hope she's making good money. No, but I, I'm curious yeah. how, you know, it'll, Yeah. now my daughter will be the oldest and I'm I mean, I'm just so excited to have a mini JC, and it's just been so long since we had a girl in the family. Yeah. 
Like it's been almost 30 years yeah. since we had a girl in our immediate family. And like, you have no idea how exciting this is for me. I know it's going to be really, really fun. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's good timing. It feels like it feels really it, good. Yeah. It feels yeah. really good. It feels right. And Carter was just in town, my little brother. And he was like, I love Lady so much for real. He's like, I can't, I can't actually imagine how much I'm going to love your daughter. And I'm like, that is the cutest thing <laughs> I've ever cute. heard. And I feel like the boys are just going to be such They're good uncles. They're so excited. Yeah. They're so excited. It's, it's very, it's been a very exciting time. time yeah. So, it has. Um, I want to, everyone wants the tea on your brows. Oh. So we're going to get into the brow journey. If you're not aware, is it called an eyebrow transplant? Yes. My mom got an eyebrow transplant. Give us all the details on why you wanted to get it, how it was, and how you feel now. Well, I wanted to get it because I had no eyebrows, Z like zero eyebrows. They fell out. They never came back. Um, and I penciled them on for 25 years. So they fell out when you were, like, how old? Um, but you never had really thick eyebrows. I never had great eyebrows. Um, they were light, and they were kind of low, um, but eyebrows weren't really a thing. Like, in what do my, you mean? In my teenager and like young adulthood, p people like we didn't even talk about eyebrows. Okay, interesting. No one plucked. No one like no one did anything with their eyebrows. They were a non-existent part of your face. They mm. were never a point of attention at all. Interesting. So I never really thought about them. And then when I went through a divorce, mm -hmm. they all fell out, which I didn't even really realize because there were other. <laughs> Other you things going on. Other things. on. other things were going on. And then one day, uh, you know, like, I don't know, six months later or something, I was getting ready for something and I'm like, excuse me, where are my eyebrows? Um, anyway, yeah. So they never came back. So I was penciling on and I did get tattoos. I brought tattoos probably like, I don't know, probably close to 20 years ago. Yeah. I got tattoos, but, um, you know, that they were brand new then. And the tattoo uh -huh, eyebrows, that was a, a new thing. So it was kind of you know, I got into it like early. I only had them done once. And did you like when you got I, them done? Did you like them? I don't think I ever really loved them, but it was better than having nothing. Uh -huh. And then they started fading and getting smaller. And so then I really was pencil. Penciling and then they, them. I mean, in the last probably seven or eight years, they were, they were completely gone. So I yeah. was just penciling. Anyway, all that to say, I, yeah, so I just didn't have eyebrows. So I wanted eyebrows. What was your second question? Um, yeah, just why did you want them? And then just kind of the research process and doing it. So about 10 years ago, I, you know, I must have typed into Google, like, what do you do when you don't have any eyebrows? <laughs> what to do when <laughs> your eyebrows As don't we exist. all do when we, when we need an answer to something. <laughs> so yeah, I found this guy, uh, a surgeon who was just starting to do it. He was in Miami and he'd only, like, he hadn't done that many. So there were only a few befores and afters and- um, I wasn't quite ready to take that plunge and <clears throat> it was super, it seemed really new. Like it seemed like he was kind of the only one in the States doing it. So, so I kind of followed his journey and like I'd get on his website once a year, a couple times a year. And, um, and then I got really serious about it. Well, I was coming up to my 50th birthday and I was just like, I want to do something for myself that I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and Be that's honest, did, did my chin inspire you at all? Probably. Like, do you feel like? Probably, for sure. Really? Like, yeah. I was going to say, you never told me not to get, do my chin and stuff. Like, but I felt like you and dad did not want me to do it. Like, dad did not want you to do it. He's like, she's so cute. Like, you're so she, cute how you are, which is like, that's beautiful. She looks so young. She just looks like a, such a little girl. I'm afraid that like dad was, and I was like, I'm all for it. Like if she wants to, do, I don't think she. The problem is I'm 30. <laughs> so we're not trying to look like a little girl anymore. It's time to grow no, up. Yeah. Anyway, no, dad was just like, I can't believe she's going to do that. And I was like, I, I was always like, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I think I, she really wants it. She's done her research. She's not going to do anything crazy. I think to be fair, obviously now that I'm even having a daughter, it's like, if she was like, I'm going to get this facial plastic surgery, I'd be like, oh gosh, you know, I hope yeah. it looks good. I hope you like it. I can understand why well, that would be also, scary. Also, like, I just completely trust you and I knew you weren't going to do anything like nuts. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I so I started looking a little more into it and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it because... Like, I'd love to enjoy however many years I have left with eyebrows. 
Now also, there's a 15% chance that it doesn't work. So you have to sign all kinds of waivers when you go have this Really? Done. I didn't know that. Yeah, sometimes your body just like won't accept it. So they'll do the transplant. Tell people how they do it because I, I didn't even know this existed. And I will admit, even when you were telling me, you're like, I'm going to get an eyebrow transplant. I was kind of like, okay. not that I was thinking you shouldn't. I was just like- Never heard of it. Yeah, never heard of it. What the heck Don't is that? Don't know anyone like, who's ever done it. Let me see some photos. So did I show you some before and afters that he, I think, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, wow, those look really good. Um, so yeah, tell people how they do so, it. So, um, first of all, my surgeon had me go to a dermatologist and rule out, um, alopecia. alopecia. So I had to go to a dermatologist and they had to completely rule out, um, alopecia. I had a, a zoom consultation with him during COVID. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I remember that. and he's just like, go, you know, you'll be a really good candidate if it's not alopecia. And so I went and did that. And then, you know, it took me another couple of years to like really decide, hey, I'm going to do this. So what they do is they well, there's two different there's two different um, methods. methods. One's called FUT and one's called FUE. And I sorry, I'm not quite sure. I think the FUT is the more invasive one where they actually cut like a strip of hair off the back of your head. Like they scalpel out a whole thing and take it because then they've got this whole strip of hair with all the hairs the hair that they follicles. can harvest. Uh -huh. And so, and then the other one, the FUE is where they take them out one by one. And that's what you did, right? So no, I did a little of both. So okay. I had the FUE like on both sides and then the FUT, like where they took the strip out along the back of my head. Okay. So then, um, you know, they like give you some real happy pills that you, you're a little bit loopy. You're not completely out, um, but like you're just feeling like everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And it, it took six hours and they inserted 350 follicles on each side of, so 700 hairs all together. On which, your eyebrows? Yeah, isn't that crazy? And they basically, because you didn't really have eyebrows, like they created the yeah. shape of them. And mm -hmm. and what I was noticing in some of your before and afters is like your original, the way you would pencil them or yeah, like the tattoo. your tattoos, like they kind of like didn't open your eyes as much. And no. now- They really went down. And I still have a little bit of a faded tattoo on the side. Mm. And when I don't have makeup on, you can see it pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Um, this one had kind of really all, all faded off, but he gave me a new shape. And w what I did not do is micromanage him. So I had gathered pictures for years about perfect eyebrow shapes, like people that I thought kind of had similar face shapes or hair mm -hmm. color, like hair texture and stuff like that to mine. And so I went in like, you know, with an armed, idea. armed with some photos and he's like, I really don't want to see those. And I'm like, oh no. He's like, no, I can look at you and I know exactly what right. needs to happen. And I mean, this was my first time meeting him in person the day of the surgery. Yeah. And he's just like, no, I, I know exactly what you need. And uh, you know what? You just let the pros do what they do. Yeah, for sure. If you trust them and you've seen a bunch of before and afters yeah. with my chin, I felt the same way where he, even because I had buckle fat removal, he was like, I'm going to take like basically none out of your um, left side uh -huh. and I'm going to take way more out of your right. Uh huh. And I was just like, okay. okay. He's like, he's like, I just am going for, you know, as much symmetry as we can get. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to get it. And he told me after the surgery that he had taken, I'm like maybe exaggerating, but he's like, I took like this much from your left, left side, side and I took like this much from your right. Cause my right was so much more full anyway. So it's just like, you have to let them do yeah, their thing. I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to micromanage him. And even when he drew them on, like they literally draw them on with like blue Sharpie. You're like, I mean, it's perfect. very, it's very shocking. It's yeah. not a good look. But he, I mean, he stood back and looked, he kind of two, drew two different ones on. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, I, you want me to tell you which one I like better? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, I like this one. And this is the reason why. Um, I mean, you know, I did go in and I was like, look, I don't want anything. Any, like I have a kind of a small face and I have small features. Obviously, like I don't want huge, anything crazy. I just want to look like I would have eyebrows. Yeah, uh, just normal eyebrows. So anyway, I am going to do a YouTube video. Oh, Slay, she's getting into mm -hmm. her YouTube era. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm going to do a comprehensive YouTube video, although you know I did it all on my Instagram. Like, there's two bubbles yeah. on my highlight mm -hmm. bubbles on my Instagram that, like, I really documented it. Yeah. Go and look, I'll, I'll link her Instagram for you. I guys. wasn't going to, but three or four days in, and I'd been recording the whole time just kind of for my own, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? There's no education on this. There is no one that has gone into depth with what to expect, what this is like, what the surgery itself is like, the healing, the recovery, 
the afters, like none of it. So I just really exposed myself and exposed. put it all out there. And yeah, I'm going to do like a comprehensive YouTube video, like, because I just celebrated one year. Of having them and you yeah. love them and they look so good. Thanks. And they look so natural. And I feel like, again, they just look so normal to me now, which I think, think is the it? best. I don't think about them, which I think is the best yeah. sign of good work is yeah. that you just, it, yeah. Yeah. But then now when I see photos of you before, I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I how know. much it just like enhanced your features. Yeah. But I mean, everyone's so sweet. Everyone's like, you didn't have eyebrows before? I mean, no. I, you know your own, your own worst enemy, right? Like you are picking yourself apart more than anyone else will. But but everyone's like, you know, yeah, they look so good. So I'm still shocked every time I get out of the shower because, of course, like I would have no eyebrows when I came out of the shower. Yeah. And when I get out of the shower and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're like so a dark. beauty queen. Also, this is my hair. Like I'm not coloring it. I'm not tinting it. I'm not doing yeah. anything to it. And it's like it's dark. And I, I'm shocked because they took I it. I always from the back thought of your I would head. still have to like fill in with a little pencil or do something like that. But no, I just literally don't do one thing to them. So they're fantastic. And the, a fun fact about them though, is that they like, oh. you have to trim them a lot because they, yeah. it's because they took it from the back of your head. Mm -hmm. It just grows like, like the hair, hair on your head almost. Right. Yeah. So the surgeon said that after maybe like two years, between a year and two, they would kind of figure out where their, their new position is. Mm -hmm. They would kind of morph into more of an eyebrow texture, mm -hmm. eyebrow hair texture. Cause you know, it's a little more coarse it's than like, like thicker, yeah. yeah. And they would start like laying down. I've already really noticed the laying down part. Like mm -hmm. at first they were kind of just almost like growing Jutting out. Yeah. Straight out. And I had to like really gel them. Now I just gel them lightly once in a while. Um, so that part's really changed. And yeah. And he said they'd stop growing like that. So uh, right now I trim them like every three days. That's crazy, mm -hmm. but it's worth it, yeah. right? Oh yeah, it takes two seconds. Like it's not. We, yeah, we've been we've been Anastasia brow freezing these babies down. Yes. They've been <laughs> just kind of yeah. They wouldn't lay as yeah. They're a, not as normal eyebrows would, especially at the beginning when no. you're like training them. Yeah. But yeah, go. The scariest go thing Instagram. is when they all fell out. Oh, because so, that's part of the process. That's part of the process. But anyway, they can't. Then I was terrified, like, oh yeah, I'm going to be the 15 percent where these things just never come back. Just watch. Oh, that would be after horrible. all this time, after 10 years of wanting them, after the money, after this healing, after the recovery, like they're just going to fall out and never come back. I was so happy. Oh, that <laughs> they, they started grew coming back. back in. Yeah. Well, they look amazing. Yeah. So yeah, and you can check out the Instagram, and um, I'm going to do. I I hope to in the near future do. A video. Nice. YouTube. Um, so Jilly's been helping with our house. It's been so There's fun. There's been lots and lots of design decisions that we've been making together. People were asking if like I have a designer, if I'm doing it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, sometimes as the seasons change, I feel like our social batteries change. So maybe you're starting to have be more social than you were in the winter, springtime's happening, there's events. I feel like I've been just out and about and doing more stuff. And sometimes that can be a little bit draining. Sometimes you can spread yourself thin. So you got to figure out what the right amount of socializing is for you and how you recharge. Maybe you thrive around people. Maybe you need some more alone time. And therapy can give you that self-awareness to build a social life that does not drain your battery. Therapy can help with positive coping skills, empowering you to be the best version of yourself, and it is not just for people who have experienced major trauma. I think sometimes when we hear the word therapy, first of all, it can feel a little daunting or scary, but you don't have to have experienced something super traumatic or major in your life. Maybe you're just not feeling like the best version of yourself and you want to learn some new coping skills or you're dealing with a hard relationship in your life and you want some advice or you just want someone to talk to if you're feeling lonely. And therapy can be awesome for any of those reasons. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge because you really want to find someone that you trust, that you get along with, and that you feel comfortable with. So find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash what we said today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash what we said. And I feel like we're kind of tag teaming. You're, oh, you're yeah. giving me obviously a ton of insight. There are so many things that 
about renovating a house that little details oh, that man. I like would have never thought of. And I was like, oh, so what way are you, you know, what are you doing with this? I can't even think of an example. Even the way the doors swing or something. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I forgot. Where, where a light switch is going. Yeah. Where, where you're going to place. Yeah. There's millions of things. Yeah. Like where the vent really? is going to be. Oh, well, that's going to be, you know, did you want to hang something there? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, there's so many choices. So Jilly is basically our in-house designer helping us with the layout. She, you were a huge part of just the layout in general. Yeah, I changed it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, it was funny because uh, we're working with these architects and they've been really great and they've had some good ideas. We've kind of all been meshing our ideas together. Like they would have an idea, you know, what if we push this wall yeah, back? What if we ideas. put the door here or whatever? And um, I basically, they had created a floor plan for us or whatever based around a meeting we had had. And then I met with my mom and I was like, what do you think of this? And she's like, well, I would do this, 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 I would change this. And then I had some changes I wanted to make. And basically I sent them back an email of like a comprehensive, just a list of yeah. every detail. And when I met with them next, they were like, thank you so much for sending all those details. They're like, we've never had someone send so many like <laughs> changes oh, no. or um people usually hate me the contractors hate me the <laughs> architects hate me the husbands hate me <laughs> it usually turns into quite quite the hate fest <laughs> because you just want to make so many edits yeah yeah but it was funny they were like but you were so detailed it was like very helpful and then they made it and it's literally exactly yeah, it's, what we want like yeah, it's, it's so great it's so great and they meshed some of their ideas as well which was awesome but yeah, they had some great ones mm-hmm the first uh, thing I said when we went and saw the house is the front door's got to move. Yeah. The position of this front door is all wrong. And that I kind of worked on that. Mm -hmm. That was like the first thing that came to me. And then based on that kind of is how everything else morphed. But that front door was It was like basically you terrible. walked into a wall. You walked into a wall like a few know, feet probably, away. Yeah, a few feet away from you. Just a straight wall. It wasn't flowing. <laughs> it wasn't open it was, at all. It was a really choppy floor plan. So we changed a lot about it. But- um, yeah. What would you say for, I don't want to, I feel like renovating is a little more, um, maybe niche and specific. And I think people listening, maybe mm. based on the comments I was getting, um, they want to hear more about like, you know, just designing their current house uh -huh. or maybe their rental and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I sure. want to, I don't want to go too far into the whole renovating thing, but where do you feel like you start when you're designing a space? Like, Maybe it's somewhere someone already lives and we're not talking about like, oh, let's remove this uh, floor or, right, or this wall. wall. Yeah, like, let's move this. Or let's just not. say someone's moving into a house or rental, whether they bought it or not. They're ma not making a ton of changes like that, yeah. but they want to just design. What do you what Well, do I you think do? you and I have had this conversation before and I think um, I've, I've told a lot of people this. If you want a rug, you better start with the rug. Mm. Because it is so hard to finish a room and then be like, okay, now like we need the rug. Almost mm. impossible, to be honest. Interesting. If you want a rug, if you're on, you know, tile or hardwood or whatever you're on, if you want a rug, you better start there. And that can dictate a lot of your design. That Personally, that's my thought. I don't know. Some designers might really disagree with that. But in my experience, the rug is a place to start if you're starting Fresh. Because of what? Just like the placement of the furniture, the colors and stuff like that? Everything? Size, colors, yeah. Placement of furniture. Like maybe you, um, you know, you have your whole room done and then you fall in love with a rug that's kind of got a center medallion, but the rug isn't centering up in your room. And so like the design looks really off because mm -hmm. like you have this medallion that starts in the middle and goes out, but it, it's just... It's just really hard to if you don't around. if you don't start with a rug. Well, maybe I need to get a living room rug then cuz I don't have one at the moment. For you're my new taking, house. You're not taking the old one? I don't think so. I think, I think you're it, ready for a new one. Yeah, I think I'm ready for a new yeah. new situation. You've had that one for a few years. Yeah. Right, um, and rugs are I mean not that they're cheap, but they are something that can make a big impact that you can change. Mhm. Mm it makes a huge difference in a room. Huge, a rug yeah. makes a big difference. Um how do you feel like someone could find their personal style, their personal personal interior design style without just falling into typical trends? Like, what would your advice be? Just pick what you're drawn to when you're at a store. Or I mean, thrifting. yeah, all the textbook answers like what what colors are you drawn to to wear yourself? Like, mm -hmm. what you know, what clothes do you usually go to? What 
Um, I mean, that's, you know, kind of a basic place to start. Um, oh, it's really hard because with social media now, trends are just so huge and you can kind of get sucked into, oh, I love that. Just because you're presented with a beautiful room or a beautiful space that you look at, you think you love, but you would like you and your family would not function there at all. Right. Like it's, it's not really feasible or it's not even really an option. So have you, have you ever gone into someone's house that maybe it's not like tip top design savvy and worthy and all that, but like you just feel so good in it. Mm -hmm. That's because they have designed it to fit them mm -hmm. and to represent them. And it just feels like them. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's not. Like, I mean, just, I'm not even saying, well, maybe I, maybe this is. Like, my grand, my grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, like. Was it going to be an architectural digest? No, <laughs> but like looking back at it, and I loved going there because they had different things and unique things and things that um, meant something to them. Mm -hmm. And they were cowboys and. They raised um, and raced mules, and it was just so homey and so them that I was just so comfortable there. And so that's such a good point. It's like because it just represented who they were, and they were so comfortable in their own space. Yes, I have friends that have a ton of money that could get anything they want, but they're super simple people, and they like not a lot of clutter and clean lines, just things that make sense. So literally, most of their house comes from IKEA. Yeah. And they could literally hire any designer they want and have anything they want, but their house is so cozy and comfortable because it just is them. They're just, you know, really nonsensical people. Mm -hmm. They are organized, they're structured. And so their house just feels like them. And I love, I love being there. I Although love it's, that. it's not something I would choose for my own space, or it's not something that I would pick for myself to live in, but I love it for them. And I love being there because they're so comfortable in it and it, if they're comfortable in it, it makes you comfortable in it. Totally. I feel like as you were saying that, I could p pinpoint certain people's houses that I'll go into where it's like, I would never, I don't necessarily look to them for design advice and I don't, I, I wouldn't pick their pieces no. or like those colors, but I love their house. Like yeah. I love being there. I'm so comfy there. Yeah. And I feel like that's a really good thing to focus on is, and I think experimenting is huge with interior design. Like, and it's, it's easy to, um, easier to to experiment when you are like thrifting yes because it's just not as expensive or you For know sure. the stakes aren't as high yeah. I feel like I've kind of tried to do that even with little like knickknacks mm -hmm. or vases I'll get a vase that's like I have this dollars. like royal blue vase that I'm like this is kind of a bright color but yeah. like I like it and I'm gonna see if it looks good on my shelf yeah. and it's literally two dollars yeah whereas and you'll if, know in a day or two like exactly. you walk by it a couple times you're either gonna love it you're just like oh like I loved it at their I just don't love it in my space. Like yeah. I can't look at it every day. Yeah. And I feel like there's also maybe, um, I don't know if this is a good, I don't even know how to like articulate this, but I feel like when you're looking at someone's space, whether it's on Pinterest or in a magazine or literally physically you're in someone's mm -hmm. space and you're like, oh, I love it here. Mm -hmm. Focusing on why. It's like, what yeah. do I actually like about it? Is it like the colors? Is it the tones? Uh -huh. Is it the textures? Uh -huh. Is it, is it just because again, it's their vibe and mm -hmm. I, it's like fits them so mm -hmm. well. What is it that I'm drawn to and kind of focusing on that? Because I think for me, I have been drawn to certain colors and tones for like 10 years mm -hmm. now. And it, it has like, uh, ebbed and flowed yeah. a little, but like the main mm -hmm. things that I'm drawn to, I'm like, I always come back yeah. to this specific, like these pastels and like mm -hmm. this kind of terracotta, yeah, like warm mm -hmm. desert pink color. And this, these like light blues and greens, like, you know, yeah, you kind of know my sure. style. And I feel like it's, it's just naturally, I like those things yeah. and I'm drawn to them. And so, and I love it because it's a little different than my style. Mm -hmm. So I help some sisters where I'm from in Gilbert and they all have like amazing taste, but different tastes than each mm -hmm. other. And I think it's so fun because all their houses are like incredible, but, uh, you know, but definitely different than each other. And I, I love that. Yeah. You got to do you. You got to do you. I, I was showing, I was telling my mom, I was showing some tile samples for our kitchen. I was like, oh, I want to do terracotta. And I got such mixed responses. Like some people are like that tile is gorgeous. That's going to look so good. And then some people were like, that what is are you like, yeah, like, 
I hate that tile. Honestly, you will regret that so much. And I'm like, no, I won't because that's what I'm drawn to. Yeah. Like, well, sure, maybe I, maybe I would regret it, whatever. That's, I guess, impossible to know. But I think like you have to do what you are drawn to. For sure. You don't go based off of someone else's opinion you'll or- You'll hate it. Yeah, you gotta do you your really, own thing. Even if it looks amazing. Yeah. If it doesn't feel like you, it's not home. Mm-hmm. It's just not. So how do you think someone like gets to that point though? Kind of experimenting, like I was saying, or just picking what they're drawn to, putting it in their house and yeah. feeling it out? I mean, I can't really commit to super high-end stuff because I do like to change. Mm -hmm. I like to change stuff up a lot and I find, you know, something new on Facebook Marketplace and it's like out with the old and with the new and I don't really have a, there's a few pieces that I really like that I'll probably never get rid of. But I mean, I'm really. You do freshen it up quite a bit. And I can cycle through stuff pretty easily. Which is easier and better to do when you are getting stuff secondhand. Oh, for sure. And it's probably feel feel less I usually make, or I usually to. make money on whatever like I bought and get I'm getting rid of like I usually So what is what is the Facebook marketplace hack? Give us all the give us all the tea on how to find the okay. best stuff. Well, um when we when we were talking about this episode, one of your things was maybe talk about one of your favorite finds from Facebook yeah, yeah. marketplace. So this just happened recently and this is a great this is a two for one. So I'm just um, you know, perusing Facebook marketplace one night and it says uh, the ad listing said table and dresser. And the front picture was a picture of a, the corner, a horrible picture of the corner of a heinous table. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but I wonder what the, the dresser is. So I, you know, I click on the first photo and then I start clicking through. It's not a dresser. Did I tell you this? Have I shown I you this? I don't know. I don't think so. I click through it. It's not a dresser. It is the most amazing European armoire you've ever seen. This is what she's calling a dresser. Okay. And I'm like, bup, 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 brrr, <laughs> hello. Um, first of all, would you consider separating the dresser and the table? <laughs> I'm really not interested in the table. Um, and if so, how much would you want for your dresser? Mind you, this was an hour away. The hack is not letting them know they have something. <laughs> no, no. That, <laughs> no valuable not that letting you want. on. So this was an hour drive away. And I was like, uh, it has to be really good for me these days to want to drive an hour. Well, I put your area in mm -hmm. of where you live. And I put like, I th think I put a 40 or 50 mile radius. So I don't know why it's like blowing it out so far. Well, even 50 miles in California, I mean, that That's can be true. like an hour and a half. That's that true. Can be... That's not in Phoenix, Arizona. That no. is different. But um, Okay, maybe I'll tighten it up to 20 mile radius. Yeah, she'll something. send me something like so good. It's like two hours. I'm like, <laughs> I cannot go for this like Sorry. $50 bench. Yeah, I need, to, I need to shorten your radius. Anyway, so she's like, um, yeah, I actually have someone else interested in the table. So I'll sell the dresser for $140. Okay. I've been to Europe lots of times. I've seen these. I know how much they cost. This was a European armoire, hand, completely hand carved. Is this the couple that you met? Is that mm -hmm. that situation is different thing? Okay. Um. So you know, and it was big. So unfortunately, I had to ask Dad if he would <laughs> come with me, which he's honestly going to be exalted, <laughs> saved sainthood, whatever is going to happen. For all the Facebook marketplace yes. runs he's had to do with yes, you? Yes, because I'm like, can you please hook up the trailer and go with me um, to pick this up? And he really was such a sport. And so I bought it first in the guys that, maybe I'll sell it because like I know what this thing's worth. Mm -hmm. But then I got it home and I'm like, oh no, I'm not selling this. You loved it. This is not. Where sell. did it go? I don't I don't. It's think going in the it. guest room. So I'm okay. getting rid of the one I got in Scotland actually that mm -hmm. I've had for a long time mm -hmm. and it's, just time. Yeah. And it's a little too big for that room. I've just always kept it because like I picked it out in Scotland and had it shipped home and mm. like it kind of have a, has a story, but I, it's this the color of this one and it's just a little bit smaller. It's, it's perfect. So anyway, so back to the what Facebook marketplace hacks, maybe you don't put in keywords. Maybe you don't put in armoire. Mm. Maybe you don't put in table because people misname things all the time mm -hmm. or they'll, they won't name it at all. They'll put you know, may, like maybe you're looking for a bar cart and they will put it under table or um, stool or something. garden 
storage or so. You know what I mean? Like it, it all depends on how they're going to list it and what they put it under. And some people don't really know what they're doing. Well, that's so. probably a good way to get a deal because if they don't even know what it is, then maybe they're selling it for cheaper than... Well, exactly. Case you know? in point yeah. is mine. Like she called it a dresser. She had no idea what she had. It's it's literally completely hand carved. Like the t- the top scrolly edges aren't aren't the same. Like you can tell someone like hand carved this one and hand carved this one because they're not like perfect. Like it's so incredible. I can't believe I haven't shown you. I don't even think I've shown you a picture of it. I don't it. think I've seen it. I mean, you have a new find every day, so I, know, I don't. It's true. But I will go to my mom's and be like, oh my gosh, this like cement table is amazing. Is it like restoration hardware? And she's like, oh no, I did the cement treatment on, um, I found it on the side of the road and then I did a cement treatment on it. I'm like, I'm sorry. And it's like $30 and I thought it was like $800. <laughs> so, I mean, on one hand, you obviously have a great eye and you are willing to put in time to like, really make something look True. good. Do you do that as much anymore though? I feel like you don't Not like as flip much things as because much. I just haven't had like the time, but I love it. Like I absolutely love doing that. I love doing DIY and all my own projects. So mm-hmm. I haven't well, had a ton of time lately. I think Facebook marketplace is an amazing place for people it to find. It really is. I've found a lot of good <clears throat> deals and things too. Um, from my house, some of my favorite pieces are Yeah. From Facebook Marketplace or consignment stores or vintage places, like, truly. And, yeah, I think it's also a good tip to just freshen things up. Like, again, if you do get a little side table for 30 bucks, then you're not going to be as, like, oh, I cannot get rid of this because I paid, you know, $800 for it. it's easier. So it's a little bit easier to, like, freshen things up and stuff like that. Um what are some things that people can do if they live in a rental and they really can't make a lot of changes to make it feel like home? So furniture pieces are great because you can take those with you and they're not permanent fixtures. So yeah. really experimenting with with furniture and with um, styling items. Like, you know, there's just so many amazing little things that you can buy and use that, you, that you'll be able to take with you. Also... I mean, they always used to say that paint was the was the cheapest thing. Paint is really not that cheap anymore. Mm. It's not a super cheap um, thing to do. However, it does make a big impact, and it can be painted back if you your can landlord always ask. Like, it. like that's something that's important is that you you can always ask your landlord. It maybe depends if you're or in you, an or do apartment. you just not ask and then you just do it and then and you just paint it back. At, or, Depending on where or you live, you sh- or you can show them pictures of what you've done. And they might say, hey, and they're like, leave it. Yeah, that's an improvement. Let me kick you out because <laughs> I didn't give you permission. Oh, wait, I I'll mean, just kick you out regardless. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> did you Did you paint any? You didn't paint any walls. I didn't. I actually, I almost painted my back wall yeah. uh, oh, that the, the couch, couch is, yeah. was on. I was going to do that. And then um, right when I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. We bought our house. And yeah. I was like, I'm not going to like put yeah. in any more effort into this house. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, there's always different rental agreements, and maybe you sign a rental agreement that says you won't change paint colors and stuff like that. But if you don't sign a rental agreement like that, I think it's I worth say go for it. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how your landlord uh, reacts. But I, I agree. I think even if you do want to ask and say, "Hey, can I paint this wall or can I put like peel and stick wallpaper?" I'll, yeah, I'll make sure that thing. it's um, back to its original thing by the time I move out, whether you ask or not, I feel like wallpaper paint. Also, you can put fabric on the wall like wallpaper. Emily Henderson on her blog just did a big blog post on it. I've done it once. I did it on the house down the street from where we live now in the boys room. I did that once and you know, there's some amazing fabrics out there. So yeah. you can put fabric on the wall and that comes off real easily when do it's you, time to come down. Do you have any favorite, like you DIY your doors, um, oh, that was a job, but, and kind of how I'm getting mine made mm-hmm. in my new house. They're going to have like these did little, did you find, you found them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, but do you have any favorite people to follow that like do a lot of design tips or tutorials? Like you just mentioned Emily mm-hmm. Henderson, not that you got that from her. I'm just asking, like, do you have like, um, people you like? I have people that I follow for different reasons. There are some great DIYers. I'm wondering if I can come up with them off the top of my head. Jenna Sue design. She's mm-hmm. the one that I got the idea to do my doors. Like okay. she, she did a tutorial on them and I'm like, wow, uh, that's great. So Jenna Sue Design is really good. Um, there's just some designers that I love that don't do a lot of DIY, but yeah. they just have really great taste. Um, 
We are going to take a quick ad break to talk about the Nike Indie Bra and the Universa Legging. We are so excited about this sponsorship. We've both been wearing Nike gear since we were teenagers for any sports we were in or physical activities. We always know that we can rely on Nike. So how do you take your breaks? Do you go for a walk or a workout class? Do you like to meal plan, run to the grocery store, maybe grab coffee with a friend? You can do all of that and more in style with the Nike Indie Bra and Universa Legging. The Indie Bra now comes in three support levels, low, medium, and high. I personally like a high support, secure feeling bra for when I'm running or doing a cycling class, but I don't want to be wearing that all day. I like something lighter with thinner straps and smoother edges for running errands or doing things around the house. And luckily, the Nike Indie Bra has both of those options and a medium option for the in-between. All three are so soft and look so flattering on. The Nike Universal Leggings are perfect to pair with the Indie Bra. They really help smooth and lift, stretching freely with your every move. Wherever your workout takes you, their squat-proof, mid-weight, and finished smooth fabric gives you uncompromising comfort and feels cool and sleek to the touch. Plus, they're durable enough for you to flex, wash, and wear again and again. They're the pair you'll reach for whether you need something for your everyday run, everyday practice, or just every day. Find your feel with Nike bras and leggings that deliver supportive flexibility and comfort for whatever your day brings. Shop now at Nike.com and that will be linked in the show notes for you guys as always. Lauren Lies, I think that's how you say her name. L-I-E-S-S. She, she, I, I love her stuff. Um, Brooke Giannetti of Velvet and Linen. We toured her house in Ohio. So amazing. That was so fun. And I still like have pictures and took notes. Like I wrote stuff down when we got back in the car. Um, they've since moved from Ojai and they live in Tennessee now, but uh-huh. their Ojai property was just, Incredible. it was next level. It was yeah. next level. Um, what about that guy who did, did like the wood on the ceiling? What's his name? Mm-hmm. Toby's he, home. Was Toby's that what home. Yeah. I like him too. He yeah. does some cool stuff. Super fun. Cool. Um, also along that same line and another great DIYer is Lone Fox home. Oh yeah. He does yeah. some really great stuff. Uh-huh. He's kind of, uh, one of the newer Angela Rose, she also like hit it. Like she got really big, really fast. She mm. does some amazing DIY stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's I lots of people out there is. who you just don't really share your projects. Like I feel like if you shared more on social media yeah. and took photos, my social media star doesn't live with me. I'm like, <laughs> her manager moved <laughs> me, my photographer, my yeah. manager moved. True. <laughs> Do you have any tips for styling shelves? Oh, Asking for a friend, aka myself, because I think that's the hardest thing for me is to okay. style like a bookcase or just okay. shelving. Like even um, Chelsea was asking me, she has like a mantle, like a little, just like a little ledge. Mm-hmm. Well, hers isn't really, her shelf is actually like really, it's not very deep, so right. you can't put much, but she was like, yeah, I don't really know what to do there. And I'm like, don't <laughs> ask me. Like, I don't know how to style a shelf. Okay. Well, I mean, that's there a diff- any, that might be a little bit different that question. Is different. Then. Um, okay. So what I le- learned with magazine styling is from a mentor that I worked with is it has to make sense. Mm. It has to make sense. You cannot put a plant. I don't care if it's fake. You're not going to put it eight foot high in the air because it, that makes no sense. Not me having a plant literally on my like 10 feet up on a shelf No, right now. There, that's different. I'm talking about a, a plant. It is fake though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm talking about a plant that looks like you've got to climb up and water it. A ladder to water. Like that just doesn't make sense. Cutting boards in your kitchen that are like up nine or 10 feet up. This makes no sense. Like a candle that's like too high to light or something like that. And you're never lighting it. Right. If you're going to have a candle, you better freaking be lighting the candle. There's nothing <laughs> worse than people that just have candles. <laughs> you heard first it here of all, first. if you put a taper up, burn the end of it. Like if you're going to put taper candles anywhere, burnt, start the mm. end of it. Do not let it have the white wick that has never been burnt. That's a bad look. Um, yeah, and burn your candles. My gosh, don't just say them Because then it just looks, a, well, and feels lived in as well. I think that's like, uh, yeah. when you're saying that, I saw this um, quote. It's probably like a, just a cheesy Pinterest quote. It said something about how it's like, we don't need generic it was talking about art mm-hmm. in a house. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we it's don't another. need the Bed Bath & Beyond quotes. It just mm-hmm. doesn't feel personal or homey. No. Like pick something that it feels like you and, and sure. speaks to you. And it's like, a. I know everyone has different style, but I feel like that is just like as a blanket statement, it's it, it just putting those very generic I know. 
things that literally That's why live, I laugh, cannot love. deal with like all the mass produced art. I mean, I say that and I've got a gigantic canvas in my front room, but what, what produced art do you have in your room? Not with a quote on it or something. No, that huge canvas I have hanging above the big buffet in the front room. Mm. You know? Yeah. Well, again, as long as you're drawn to it and yeah, if you think and it's I beautiful am. and if you are drawn to the live, laugh, love, by all means, live, I'm just, laugh, love it up. live, laugh, love it up, babe. <laughs> But I'm just saying it's like, I'm forgetting this quote, but it was saying something just about how like sterile that feels to yeah. just like go in, even to just like go into one store and buy just like All a your whole stuff. set and like yeah. your whole thing. It just doesn't feel very like lived in and cozy. Yeah. I was, I can't remember who was giving the advice. They were like, don't buy a set. A bed set? Like a bed set. Like yeah. don't buy a set headboard. of yep headboard uh Tall nightstands dresser, <laughs> dresser the yeah. whole thing that like looks all the same because that again is it's not giving lived in it's not feeling are you thinking of my master bedroom i'm like yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> i never ever do that but i decided to that's like a vintage appe danish appease one, dad and he loves denmark so much and i found like a whole set from Copenhagen and it like it's so good so it's different when it's European <laughs> um no but do you know what I mean I'm talking going into oh, yeah. whatever it's called a very generic store yeah, and living like, spaces yeah and just getting yeah. like the set again you can literally do whatever you want this I'm just saying if you're looking for a more like comfortable lived in and cozy specific space. to you like yeah. something that you're drawn to not just like the generic thing you've seen a million times yeah, yeah that's why um the mass produced, the designers that are just doing like everything brand new, it, to me, it has no soul. It has no personality. It just like, if you have the money, you can go buy that and completely recreate the look. Right. And why do you want what everyone else has? Mm -hmm. It makes zero sense. Like you see that for someone else and you're literally just going to go copy it exactly and do it at your house. It makes no sense to me. I think that's that's a reaction though when you maybe like feel like you don't know what, what to, do. to do. To be fair, because I feel even when I was saying I was pulling inspiration for for our house, um, our new house, I'm like sometimes it's almost easier to just go with something that you've seen a well, lot because well, you're like, well, I know easier. it'll look good. Like yeah. just certain. I can't even think of yeah something specific, but it's like sure. all white cabinets with like. Uh, light marble. marble, like the a classic thing you've seen a lot. It's like, well, it does look yeah, beautiful. I, it looks, I like it. it. It looks nice. It looks and nice, it's safe. and it's safer than being like, I'm gonna do this like I'm gonna experiment. Yeah, I'm gonna experiment with this like yeah. colored countertop because it's like, well, what if I pay all that money and I don't like it? So to be fair, I think sometimes yeah. it is just easier to be like, uh, just do like all neutral or like yeah. all white because I just know it'll look good. The problem is you're not gonna like it because it's really not you. There are so many design exceptions now, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are kind of just doing whatever they want and yeah. yay for that. And again, going back to what we were talking about at first, I think if you do it and it represents you and it feels like you and you're comfortable in your own space, everyone that's, else is going to be comfortable there too. Yeah, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if no one else has done it. In fact, if no one else has done it, yay. Yeah, Like be sure. the first to do something. And- what is there really to lose, especially if you're, you know, <laughs> a lot of money, but yeah, but if you're doing <laughs> stuff on the cheap, like try stuff on the cheap before and, and really figure out what your style is before you start spending the big money. For sure. Rentals are a great place to do that. Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, this isn't my space. So I'm just kind of kind of experiment. Also, like <clears throat> I gained so much inspiration from like traveling and visiting other places. Mm -hmm. And my own, I mean, Europe obviously is full of inspiration, but even in the States, like hotel lobbies, yeah, restaurants, um, you know, like small shops, mm -hmm. store windows, like those can offer so much creative spark for you to, you know, take from and expound on, like make it better, make it yours, like take that inspiration, but do something with it that represents you better. Totally. I was, uh, someone was saying how Pinterest is awesome for inspiration, but sometimes there's like these viral pins, you know, these viral uh, yeah. houses or rooms that, right. that just go big on the internet and then it becomes extremely popular to do whatever right. was on that. And so um, this girl, she was just giving advice because she was designing her home. She's like, 
my advice is to like sometimes get off Pinterest mm-hmm. because it's um yeah, maybe if you're taking little it things from each thing. You, yeah, it'll influence start influencing all your choices. Yeah, but it's like if you're just going to recreate someone's kitchen, right. chances are if that's like a viral pin, you're going to start seeing a lot oh, of yeah. kitchens that look just like that, which there's nothing wrong with. Again, if you're so drawn to it and you're obsessed with it, sure. who cares really if someone else across the world has a similar one or who really cares? But yeah, it's just about kind of honing in on your own thing. I love um, the weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure you've seen those reels and stuff. Like, buy the weird stuff. Fill your house with the weird stuff. And it'll I just like, seen that. Really? It'll just like Are we talking about the from- hornet's nest? Ooh. My mom literally made my dad climb a tree and no, get no, a no, hornet's no. He nest. Roped. He roped it. <laughs> he get a dried up hornet. Not a not an active no, nest. No, no. This is in the dead of winter in Canada. The, the wasp, the hornets had left, completely left. And I did my research. They don't come back. So, okay. so we're being sustainable. So we're being sustainable. Okay. They, yeah, I was not taking their home. They never reuse the same nest, but it's really cool. It's like a sculptural, like it's like a so nest. Cool. It looks almost like what even really is it? thin, like scalloped paper, like marbled paper. Yeah, it's really cool. How did and you, it has how maple did you know leaves to get that? Like, stuck Have you seen it. someone use? use I've it? seen them in um, like antique stores in Canada, mm. but they're always like at least two or three hundred dollars. Mm. and then dad told me don't you dare tell my dad you want one of those because he'll literally climb a tree and he's 88 (laughs) he'll climb a tree to get you one and I'm like okay I won't say anything but when I was just in Canada in February like but you will be climbing the tree and me and dad were walking we saw one that was kind of low because they're always up at the top of a tree and then you don't see them until you know because they make them in the springtime and the summertime and the trees are all full And then they vacate them when the Mm. leaves start falling. So you don't see them until like all the leaves are off a tree. So anyway, I had the idea to pull the car up under it and stand on the top of the car. The things she makes my father do. (laughs) And dad is like, no, I'm getting a rope. And I'm like, ooh, brilliant. So that was much easier. Yeah. So do you have it displayed in your house? yet? No, I still have it out like drying. Like I want it to be completely dry because it was like it was snowy and wet when I brought him from Canada. So I wanted to sit out on the phoenix heat and like really dry up i don't want it to have any like weird smell or anything so so she traveled across country lines with a hornet's nest yeah um if you're not if you don't have that kind of commitment to your house then (laughs) i don't know what to tell you what about when i came home from france with a goat milking stool in my um in my like carry on that i was carrying on there's always something there's always there's always something um well what are like little little things that you think off the top of your head that someone that are m- maybe more affordable that you could find if you are at a thrift store, like to spruce things up or change things up in your house. Even if it's like, you know, right now it's spring. Or I-, I like to usually freshen things up for a new season, whether it's like yeah. a different throw pillow, a yeah. candle, whatever. So are there things that come to mind? That Easy. It- I mean, fresh flowers are always a go-to. Mm-hmm. Trader Joe's flowers are not expensive. Foraging flowers are free. She's like, go into your neighbor's yard and <laughs> dig them up with a shovel and then host no. a Facebook sale. <laughs> It's free, you guys, it's free. <laughs> we know this works. Um, no, like, I mean, you can forage, like, really cool, huge branches. You can forage, so much stuff is growing on the side of the road. I mean, our roses are in full bloom right now, so I'm not buying any flowers because I literally have a fresh bouquet of white iceberg roses every few days. Like, they're huge. You just go and trim them off your yeah. little tree. So fresh bush. flowers are just a must for me. Mm-hmm. Like, you just got to- They you make just every gotta, space better. Yeah, you just got to have fresh flowers. They are a nice refresher that that they're not- I mean, Trader Joe's are like, you can do whatever, four ninety nine, five ninety nine a bunch. Mm-hmm. And like the carnations will literally last for two weeks. So if you really need them to last, get the, get the mini carnations. They last forever. Um, yeah, like you said, a throw blanket, a throw pillow. I like to just change, you know, things from heavy to a little bit lighter mm-hmm. with the seasons. Um, I mean, you can find just so many little cute things. I just found a little trio of three ducks, like ceramic ducks. Actually, they're not very small. They're probably 12 inches um, at a thrift store for $10. It's like so springy. Um, so just, you know, little... I always think like a plate a plate collection that you can just like if you like blue and white like start collecting blue and white china from thrift mm-hmm. stores and do like a plate wall. Cute. So cheap, such a great impact or just antique plates or you know all different shades of pink plates or like you mm-hmm. can just get really creative with stuff that just really doesn't cost 
very much money. I feel like glassware also is such that's like fun. at Goodwill or just mm -hmm. any thrift Super store. Super available. So available. You can mm -hmm. always find something and mm -hmm. whether it's like a vase to put little flowers in or something and you can candle find, holders. Yeah. Candle holders always at thrift store or like actual cups. Like I've found yeah, really like cool. Like drinking glasses. Yeah. Like drinking glasses mm -hmm. that are Mugs. just like. Really fun during the winter. Uh -huh. So many mugs. They're so easy to find there. And yeah, plates and just like collections like that, I feel like are Luckily, really Luckily, I don't, yeah. Like I'll just, I have like, you know, all different silverware. Like I've collected tons of it in France and then whatever I had. And like mine's just all mixed up. Like I'll just get all kinds of whiteware for dinner plates. So I'll have, you know, lots of different shapes and patterns, but mm -hmm. like, it's just kind of a fun mix. And then, you know, again, I don't stress when something breaks. I don't stress when I have to replace something because. Yeah, there are no rules either. Like I have so many random cups, like drinking glasses really that don't ones. match with others. Cause I, they're like one-off things I've found at thrift stores that I just think it's a cool yeah. like shape or something. Um, I'm actually obsessed with glassware. Life's like put down the cup. Like we have so many, I've actually yeah. been having to get rid of some, but again, I don't care because it's, it's so, it cheap. so cheap yeah. to buy. Um, but I love a new fun glass for like my beverages. I just think yeah, it's, it's a fun, fun way to like freshen up my life. It is. And just kind of elevate, like you talk about romanticizing your life. Uh -huh. Like you get a new fun cup and you make a little drink in it and yeah. it just feels. Can I talk about my favorite drink right now? Fresh. Yeah. Of course. The peach fresca. Have we talked about it? No, I <gasps> want it though. What is it? Oh my gosh. You never had it? No. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So it comes in the can. Okay. Peach fresca. And I think they have a grapefruit one. Mm. Um, oh wait, I think I've had grapefruit fresca. Fresca okay. is really good. Okay. Well, the, the peach one is to die for. Really? Like we need to go find one after this. Okay. Peach fresca. And then I put like a, just a touch of cream in it. And then like to really elevate it, a little bit of lime. <gasps> I'm going to get some new glassware. It's giving more Because my mom. glassware is hainy. <laughs> so this is, this is inspiring me. Oh, yikes. Did you see that Dr. Pepper has come out with like a Dr. Pepper coconut cream version? Uh -huh. And like Coffee Mate has now made um, like creamer for Dr. Pepper. Basically. Oh, really? It is all like, this is the Mormons doing 100%. <laughs> you know how they have soda yeah, shops yeah, all and stuff. The all the dirty sodas. Yeah, the dirty sodas. Uh -huh. Like it is now becoming mainstream and it's becoming so popular because even what you just said with like, oh, Fresca, put oh, a little gosh. cream in it. Like that is a dirty soda, quote unquote. Oh yeah, it's so good. That, um, I almost said normal people, but it's like that. A lot of people would be <laughs> yeah. like cream. Like what are you, what oh do you mean? my gosh. But it's so good. Oh, you to guys have, like, have to try this. Soda. Um, Delish. the peach frost, it can be a little bit hard to find, but I have found it at Walmart. Okay. Thank you. Like by the, by the case. Yum. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I, I love a fruity drink lately. It's just especially. like, it's so light. Mm. It's, it's really good. I can't wait for you to try it. Delicious. Maybe we'll have to go mm -hmm. get some after this. <laughs> um, let me see if there's any more quick questions to end on. This podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, and I am so happy it is because I absolutely love Squarespace. I have used it for so, so many things in my life. Literally every business venture I've ever started has come along with a Squarespace website. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. So whether you are just starting out or you're managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place, all on your own terms. Something I love about Squarespace is just all the different templates that they have to make your website really beautiful, really user-friendly without you yourself having to know a ton about website coding or technology, honestly. It, you can kind of just like insert your photos, insert your assets, insert the text you want to be there and just go off of a template that they already have, but you can still add little things to customize it, which is awesome. You can sell custom merch very easily on Squarespace and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand design your products and production, inventory and shipping are all handled for you, saving you time and money. They also have an asset library, which is really game changing. You can upload, organize and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. They also have a lot of insight into analytics. So you can use your insights to grow your business. You can learn where your site visits are coming from and your sales analyze what channels are most effective for you and improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on the top keywords or most popular products and content that people are liking, which is super valuable information when you are running a brand or any sort of company. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash what we said to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that is squarespace.com slash what we said. Go check it out.
we're circling back on the shelving question because we're realizing we didn't, all we got was that it just has to make sense. But what are some other, like, is it good to have levels when you're styling a shelf? Okay. So there, yeah, there are different ways to style shelves. Obviously you can like pack them up, which as a, a style I love, like, I think it can look so What do you mean? Cozy. Put a lot of stuff yeah. In it? Like uh, just a lot of collected, like books at thrift stores are just so cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't like the spines of them, turn them around and show, you know, the not, pages. not, yeah, not the table, but sh- turn the title, but sh- turn them around, show the pages. Mm-hmm. That can be a really fun look. Um, so anyway, you can stuff a, stuff shelves or you can do them super minimally. Mm-hmm. And depending on your style and, and of course, then there's everything in between. But collections work really well. Um, colors, like if you want high contrast, that what do, works. What do you mean or if you, you want like monochromatic. Like if you have a bunch of books, maybe all your red books and then switch to all your brown books and then switch to like to make it look shelves. a little, yeah, to make it look a little more cohesive. Or uh-huh. If you have one long shelf, like just kind of a rainbow, you know, uh-huh. just like, but keep your colors kind of an ombre look, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and then just fill it with stuff that means something. Mm-hmm. Do not, please, please do not go to Target and buy all the stuff for a shelf. Like that's just so generic. Mm-hmm. Just look for stuff. I have a hummingbird nest. <laughs> on one of my shelves. Matt, I have something for a nest. Theme? Go uh, get a nest, you guys. It's easy. <laughs> but a hummingbird nest? Oh my gosh, that mother hummingbird had her babies in our honeysuckle outside the back door and we watched her and then we watched the babies fly away that day and I did my research. The, hun- the hummingbirds do not come back to their nest. So I took it out and it's just so tiny and adorable. Um, like we have this owl that lives in the tree in the back. He's there every night. And sometimes his feathers, his big long feathers will be on the driveway in the morning. So I have some of it. I just keep collecting his feathers and I have them like in a jar, you know, in like a little pottery vessel thing. Mm -hmm. Um, make it, just make it meaningful. Make it mean something to you. Pictures of families, like Mm -hmm. get, get pictures of your family up and around. Don't just keep buying generic art. Like do something that means blow up. Um, vacation photos, even if it's just scenery. It doesn't always have to have people in it. I saw this really cute, like almost collage thing that someone did. I need to show you. I was wanting to do it for our dinner office. It's like- Like a gallery wall? No, it was like all in one frame, but it was like photo booth pictures Mm -hmm. and like items. It was just like meaningful Uh items to them all in like a frame. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was really cute. And I was like, I want to do more stuff like that in this house because- I don't feel like I have a ton of generic art, I guess. Like most of my art I find at vintage stores and stuff. But it also is hard. Someone was like, how do you shop for art? Because it's so hard to like make it all coordinate, which I agree with. Like I've gotten some art sometimes and I'm like, this is all like together. It's not really vibing. It's hard. Um, But if you have an interest, like uh, say you're into horses, Mm -hmm. maybe you just collect all sorts of Western art. Right. Or something that has- Yeah, if you kind of have a theme, you've seen those gallery walls that are just so eclectic, but it works Mm -hmm. and they just- that's such a great thing to thrift and True. look for because you can find cool frames. You can find cool art. Um, you can kind of be like, okay, I'm going to do like a floral theme. Yeah. Or like I'm going to do an ocean theme. I'm going to do a desert theme. Yes. And I feel like it does make it easier. Yes. I'm doing a ship. S-H-I-P. Sometimes it sounds not good. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Boats. <laughs> um, a ship theme in, in dad's office. And I've just been collecting like that kind of art. And I've gotten some really fun pieces. And- I would. I wasn't looking for anything like that, or I wasn't really drawn to that until I started thinking, okay, I'm going to do like a collage all with that. Mm-hmm. And my gosh, I have found the coolest and just amazing boat ship art. Yeah, yeah. that's a cool idea. That's a good idea mm-hmm. too to like kind of narrow down because sometimes mm-hmm. I think it's daunting to be like, or you're collecting portraits, like you don't know who they are, but you, like you just find these, you know, oil paintings or whatever of mm-hmm. of people, and like that's just interesting. And it's giving haunted, I will say. <sighs> They don't, have that to be, they, have, they don't have to be scary photos. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I think I think that's a good a good little tip yeah. for art. Because that is hard for me. I feel like I have- Art is very subjective. You know my poodle that I have. Oh. I'm obsessed with this poodle. Oh. I got this red. It's like, but the problem is- It's, it's a needle point. It's a needle point little- Stitched. Yeah, stitched it's art. So and it's cute. like kind of big. I mean, it is. And it's a red background. It's and It's kind a of little... a salmon red, though. It's not like f- cherry red. No. It's not like fire engine red. No, but it's it's kind of bold, you know? And then it's a little white poodle. And I just, like, can't explain. But, like, when I saw it, I'm like, I have that's to coming have that. home with me. Like, yeah. I don't know 
that doesn't even go with like the colors that I ever Anything, have, yeah. but like it, that has to it's be in so my house. It's so cute. But I haven't really, yeah, found a place you for it. You haven't found a is. prominent place for it in this house, but you will in a new house. And even if it doesn't go with things, yeah. people are going to love it because it's so you. Yeah, I'm And obsessed. you look at that and you know that you love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to pick stuff that you're drawn to. Yeah. And I feel and like it's that's weird. deeper. I mean, that was a weird <laughs> that's thing. That's weird. That's why and I'm saying free. get the weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Like get the stuff that you're just like, this makes no sense. But for some reason, like this has to come home with I'm me. I'm just in love with yeah. it. Yeah. And maybe that's deeper. Like as I was thinking about it, it's like you kind of have to have a sense of self or like know, you know what I mean? To, to even know what get, you love yes to like get to a point where you're like i'm so drawn confident, to that confident, confident enough to just to say i don't know what i'm going to use that yeah. for i don't know how i'm going to use it but i love it and i'm yeah taking it i actually feel like at the beginning of um like even when Leif and i first got married i did have a lot more generic stuff like i i think i was like starting to make money and i was like i can afford west elm like yeah. i wanted to, and i remember you just being like why do you want what <laughs> everyone has like do like get something you know and now I feel like I have such, it's just like the older you get, you can turn into your mom. <laughs> but I feel like I have such an appreciation now for just like those fun, unique pieces because yeah. I do feel like that where it's like, you know, yeah. it doesn't even matter if I, I don't even want to now like go into a no. nice store and just like pick out a set. I mean, they have their place. They do have their place. Oh wait, that was going to be one of my design tips. Oh. Since all of you guys were begging to, <laughs> to know. Um, is like a mix of new and vintage mm, because yeah, I, I think, that. I think like sometimes when I've had too much old yeah, stuff, I'm like, for sure. It's feeling to me like yeah. very, uh, I don't even know the word. Granny but, chic. Yeah. It's, it's, it's giving grandmother and it's kind of feeling like too old, old and it's just not, Fresh. but if you have a mix yeah. of like, like my, um, bed is like mm -hmm. a more modern and yeah. whatever, but then I have like a vintage dresser and I yeah. feel like. And, and my uh, nightstands are new, but then I'll have like a vintage vase on with flowers in it. Right. And to me, that mix, I love that. And that's what I do too. Yeah. I mean, you've got to have some new stuff. You cannot just have old vintage. Everything. Be, you can do whatever you yeah, want, but you can't to. appreciate it. You can't appreciate all the great old stuff if you don't have anything like new, clean lined. You know what I mean? Just kind of sturdy solid pieces like you've got to have some of those and even though most of the stuff in your house is secondhand some of it is still new like oh for sure like some of the pieces that you have like your couches or I I can't even think of off the top of my head but like you've had pieces in your house that are like restoration yeah. hardware pieces but she just got them for yeah cheaper well, on Facebook marketplace the crate, the crate and barrel sofas the two matching crate and barrel sofas yeah. in the front room yeah found them on Facebook marketplace six hundred dollars for the pair yeah like, those are coming home with me. Thank you very much. Of course. And yeah, so, of course. So yeah, those are new. But then, you know, I have that big, huge antique German sideboard. And right. it's so old. But then I have kind of a newer um, bookcase. Like, a, yeah. you know, a clean, clean line bookcase. And, and then more vintage pieces on the bookcase. Yeah. I think that's an important detail. Because I yeah, was thinking about right. that. Because um, in our house, like, we have the cloud couch. And it's so comfy. And I've honestly just don't feel like I can get rid of it. Like oh, I was so comfy. It's so comfy. I was thinking about in the new house, if we want a different vibe and I'm just like, it is just, I begged her to so not get rid of it. Comfy. I don't think I I've can do slept it on it. it. I've, we've just, we've, we've had so many times. I know. Good times and bad times. I know. I think it's, you're, I think you're going to need to come over to my new, um, 200 square foot apartment that I'll be living <laughs> in. For, I don't know how many square feet it is. My, our tiny little spot yeah. that we're moving into. I was thinking like, I hope we can put a few things in here to make it feel a little cozy to. and homey because can it's, I talk it's about already it? furnished. Can I talk? Yeah. Can I talk about another cozy, homey thing that I think goes hand in of hand course. with design? Mm -hmm. Can you guess what I'm going to say? That goes hand in hand with design? Yeah. Like making a place homey and cozy. I can't guess. Okay. You gotta, you gotta be baking something. I was about to say food, but I'm you like, gotta I don't know be if you're going there. Something good. Your house has got to smell good. I don't care if it is a candle. Like you, you gotta. There's got to be some. You gotta appeal to the senses. You gotta appeal to. The what is she pulling out of something of her bag? She's like, which brings me to my fresh baked. What is this? My fresh baked cookies. Stop, mom. <laughs> you're joking. No. What is These it? These are so good. If this is not the most Jill-coated <laughs> thing I have ever seen. Pulls out fresh baked cookies in a 
<laughs> like custom box. Please taste them. What are they? They're so good. They're a French cookie. Wow, you made these? Mm hmm I don't know why I'm surprised. Okay, uh -huh. ASMR. Aren't they so good? Like a wow, little shortbread? Like shortbread. Mm hmm Okay. You gotta have something good to eat. It goes right hand in hand. Do you not agree? No, they're so good. I just don't want the mouth noises to trigger people. Those taste like they're straight out of a French bakery. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the object. That um, was the goal. That was the goal. So yeah, I think that really it does go hand in hand with good design in my mind. Like you've got to you've got to bake something. You've got to cook something. You got your house has to smell like you know when you walk into someone's house in the winter and it just smells like a soup is simmering mm -hmm. or. Like you walk in and you smell fresh bread. Like it just is. It, it definitely adds, adds a lot. It adds so much to. But also, if you're a hardworking girl boss and you don't have time to bake bread, get a good candle. Get a good candle. Mm -hmm. You are still valuable. Mm -hmm. I um, just made soup the other night and we walked back in our house after I made mm -hmm. it and I was like, mm -hmm. I must admit, it feels and smells so cozy yeah. in here. I mean, I think it really adds. I think it really does. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, something else I love is the Palo Santos sticks. The sticks, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have those. I love those. I love those. And you just burn the end of them for 25 seconds or something, snuff it out, and then just like, they kind of smoke. Yeah. So you just kind of carry them around your spaces and your rooms and kind of wave the smoke and it just leaves this little, you know that Palo Santos is just so Yeah, it good. smells I really good. I love that smell. Also, Amber Interiors has some of the best um, smelling candles that you can buy. Mm. They're so good. They are really good. Um, they have a, a storefront here in Lido. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can order, of course, online, but she has some really, really good candles. A candle is a great way to make yeah. your house smell good. I saw this thing. It was like my favorite... My favorite time of the day or like my favorite, I don't remember exactly how it's worded, is when I finally, like it looks like no one lives in my house and I light my candle. <laughs> Basically, it's like you've cleaned everything yeah, up and all the like pillows are fluffed uh -huh. and you light a candle and you're just like, oh, yes. it feels so good. It really does. <laughs> it's so cozy. Yeah. Um, well, we could probably talk for a lot longer, but thank you so we much. We And we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. And for Thanks joining for me. me today. I'm sure people will love this cozy episode, I hope. I hope so. And we'll have to have you and Stephanie, Chelsea's mom, back on at some point. Oh, yeah. I would love to fun. do another, like, well, Mother's Day is a little, it's too close at this point. Yeah. But maybe, like, next year. That'd be fun. I mean, it doesn't have to be on Mother's Day, but it would be fun to do another episode with you guys. Um, or maybe Chelsea can bring her mom on when, they, when I'm on maternity yeah, leave or something. For but, sure. She's fun. Yeah. She is a fun gal. Thank you guys so, so much for listening. You guys can watch on YouTube too. If you did not know, you can get a visual of us eating our cookies. <laughs> um, and also, Jilly did not design this ugly space. So let's keep that in mind first. <laughs> so you're not getting design tips from, from anyone who touched this. Okay? It's going to be Don't cute. Don't worry. It, it'll be cute. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. You'll have to give me some, some tips after this. I know you're not a set designer, but um, there's, there's some work to be done. Yeah. Um, you guys can subscribe on the Apple podcast app, Spotify. If you're feeling extra generous, go ahead and leave us a rating and review five stars. It would mean the world to us. We love you guys so, so much. And that's, that's what, what we, we said. said. Bye. Bye. <laughs>